depths of the dungeon, the ultimate evil awoke. It did not know what had happened, nor why it had awoken, but it longed for revenge. The last remaining heroes of the country joined forces and cast a powerful banishment spell. The absolute evil disappeared from sight with a threatening gesture, and a faint whispered, I'll be back, could be heard coming from its lips. The absolute evil had been banished, and its essence shattered into several pieces. Its reign of terror had ended. The good people of the overworld rejoiced and an era of peace began for the Alliance. The evil creatures were driven back into the underground, doomed to serve as cannon fodder for pleasure-seeking adventurers. Meanwhile, secreted away in the world's most inaccessible places, the last remains of the absolute evil were resting, never again to see the light of the overworld. Until today, that is. Somewhere deep under the earth, the ultimate evil awoke. And the hand of terror arose controlled by the ultimate evil. Come on, Hand of Terror! Arise, damn you! Methinks that exploring the surrounding area would be a sensible strategy. However, to do this, light would be required. Hmm. Still not bright enough. An old throne room was revealed by the light. The circumstances remained a mystery. The Hand of Terror flew through the throne room, following each and every thought the ultimate evil had. After a few flying sessions, the ultimate evil was able to control the Hand with ease. The time had come to call forth creatures who were completely devoted to it and would do its dirty work. Little snots were the dregs of each and every dungeon and spent their time taking care of it. The expansion-mad evil hired one snot on the spot. The first little snot appeared. It was completely ready to work in the dungeon and to crawl in the dust before the ultimate evil. Little snots were important to the ultimate evil because they took care of many important little things, such as excavating new areas. The psionically gifted evil could sense the presence of something important that was buried to the south. It instructed its little snots to dig in that direction. As quick as a fart, the little snot made his way to the marked position and began to dig. Behold, the creatures of the overjoyed evil had apparently been much more industrious than it had thought. A great dungeon was revealed behind the wall. Everything was already in place. Doors, traps, a well-filled treasury. Oh, wait. Treasury? And where, if you please, is this treasury? Oh, oh well. One can't expect too much of these mindless little snots. First of all, some gold had to be dug out to make space for a treasury to be created. The Hand of Terror swiftly marked a few small gold veins so that the little snots could excavate them. As soon as the gold vein was selected, a little snot immediately set out to mine valuable gold for the greedy evil.
Once most of the gold had been mined, the Hand of Terror quickly created a treasury on the spot so that the precious metal could be safely stored. Oh. Clever Evil mastered this task with flying colors. From now on, Little Snots could use the treasury to store mined gold. It was then at the Greedy Evil's disposal whenever more rooms needed to be built or new creatures recruited. Little Snots were all well and good, but were too weak and cowardly to defend the dungeon. Since it was not able to defend itself, the ultimate evil would have to hire some orcs. But they would require food. Liquid food. Well, beer to be so the next important thing to build was a brewery, and that would require some space to be created. The ultimate evil had the feeling that its servants were not really putting their backs into the work. Might a hearty slap from the hand of terror change that? Now an area cleared for the brewery site, and with quick finger snaps from the Hand of Terror, the room stood ready. Excellent, but the recently built brewery lacked a brewing copper. With a sigh of resignation, the overworked evil set about taking care of that too. Hard-working evil effortlessly built a brewing copper so that delicious beer could be brewed as soon as possible. One of the little snots started working on the brewing copper. The nostalgic evil banished all thoughts of Oktoberfest and brass bands. Those would have to wait. More important tasks had to be completed first. Both beer and gold were now available in the dungeon. So it was time to hire some creatures to defend against greedy heroes or whatever else snuck around underground. At present, it was only simple orcs declaring undying loyalty to the ultimate evil. The rest of the horde was scattered to the winds. Orcs were defensive close combat specialists, capable of dealing with many opponents. However, they were very vulnerable to ranged attacks. Payday! An eerie gong rang through the halls. It did not bode well for the ultimate evil's treasury stocks, for at each sounding of the gong, the creatures would collect their undeserved wages. However, there was little it could do about this, as it was chained to the throne. Thus, it had to give free rein to its servants' desires. For the time being, at least. The dungeon of the expansion-mad evil grew and prospered, but unfortunately, it had reached the maximum possible population it could currently manage. Now a creature would have to be thrown into the bottomless pit before any others could be brought in. Suddenly, one of the repellent evil servants became very thirsty. This was typical of a troop member of the unanonymous alcoholics known as the Hall. The Dipso made his way to the nearest brewery to quench his thirst. A thirsty orc arrived at the brewery. 
eager and slavering, he started demolishing the alcohol hoarding evil's stock of beer. Creature disappeared into the pit of uselessness with a long drawn and gradually diminishing. This particular act of wickedness brought a smile to the face of the ultimate evil. One louse-infested orc crawled up from the depths and declared allegiance to the ultimate evil. The first step towards the creation of a powerful army had been taken. The profound evil had had enough of dungeon sightseeing and now wanted to move to the surface to try a dish that is best served cold. Revenge. Some Alliance members were bound to be guarding the entrance to the overworld. A fine appetizer for a vengeful evil. Nameless evil's creatures came upon a spider's nest during their search for an entrance to the overworld. It would take more than one orc to smoke that out. The abysmal evil used the hand of terror to grab several of the creatures that were still completely inexperienced at fighting and threw them onto the spider's nest. The dungeon of the ultimate evil was full of gelatinous cubes, invisible gelatinous cubes. The spiders dropped like flies. The strategically well-versed evil patted itself on the back, proud that it had led its troops into battle with such aplomb, and by led, I just simply mean chucking them at the enemy. The basics of a dungeon were now in place. However, the brewery was puny and didn't really have room to store beer barrels in, and the treasury was also anything but impressive in size. Quickly, the expansion-hungry evil set out to enlarge its dungeon. It's payday. The evil has awoken, but its brothers are still asleep. Huh? What on earth was that? That's not in my script. What a weirdo. 
No matter. We'd better get back to concentrating on the dungeon. monstrosity loomed out of the darkness on six, no, eight legs. This dungeon's human guards had been ancient history for a long while. Now it was home to a huge spider and her brood. Would Sam and Frodo escape it and continue their journey to Mount Doom, or was this the end of the ring bearer? Hang on a minute, that's not the right text. Where were we? Oh yes, a huge spider, henceforth called the Spider Queen. It would be necessary to eliminate the Spider Queen before the Horde could reach the surface. The Spider Queen sent forth a wave of her children. Of course, the ultimate evil was fully aware of this danger and immediately prepared to defend itself against them. Neat. That's what I heard. The vile perversion, once called the Spider Queen, had nothing more with which she could fight the Horde. Later, the sensitive evil would have her innards made into a lava lamp. The way to the surface was open. Now it was time to put those vengeance plans into practice. The vile evil wanted to take this opportunity to utter a really sinister laugh. But unfortunately, its physical state made this unviable. Instead, it asked the narrator to do a bit of sinister laughter on its behalf. Oh well, here goes. Deep breath. 